that's good we are on live now so i think uh, the audience will uh, start joining us very shortly so how is weather over there actually in the weather in the southern part of sweden is a bit uh, rainy nowadays today yes uh, yeah five degrees maybe something like that okay is it snowing there no not in southern part it was snow three days ago you never know when i hope to have snow for christmas all right northern all right. part is a bit colder and snow okay yeah i love when it is snowing rather than like when it is actually like raining because yeah. when it is snowing it is more lights outside actually so that is what actually i like all the time yeah, i agree i agree so that's really good uh so yeah we have we can see that like few of the audiences has started joining with us so uh <clears throat> in this time i was um hi uh audiences i mean good afternoon and good evening to everyone like whoever you are watching the session so um today we are talking we'll be talking about study in sweden and we do have a special guest uh, mr thomas benson from university west um so we'll be talking about of course study in sweden and all of uh, at the same time, we'll be talking about university waste and then admission systems, applications, and then scholarships and so on. So let's go to our uh, guest. Um, so, uh, Mr. Thomas, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, Thomas Bengtsson is my name. I'm Director of International Affairs at University West, and I'm happy to be here. And I think uh, the audience is mainly from Bangladesh, if I'm right. And uh, yeah, most of them will be from Bangladesh, yes. but it could be from some other countries as well. Yes. I mean, um, well, I'm happy for that. Happy to be here and uh, present Sweden, Trollhättan, the beautiful city of Trollhättan and University. Yes. Sure. Um, so, uh, Thomas, uh, could you please, um, I mean, um, show us the presentation so uh, the audiences will be happy to see the, I mean, presentation so they will get to know more about the university waste and so on, please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's go for it. I think it is here for it you. Can be see it can be seen now. <clears throat> yes, Good. it can be seen now. I'm happy for that. So, Sweden. And the slides working as well? Yes, it is. Sweden, we are located up here, northern part of Europe. Uh, neighboring countries, Norway in the west, Denmark southwest, and then we have Finland to east. And then uh, in south, we have Poland and Germany. You can see Sweden is yes. a really tall country. <coughs> and when we talked about the weather and I said it was rainy and five degrees, it's uh, like that in the southern part of Sweden. Then it, if you go like 10 hours by car from Trollhättan, you reach middle part of Sweden and then it's more snow. And if you continue and drive maybe eight, 10 hours more, then it's really cold and snowy. So you can have all different kinds of climate here in Sweden. Some buzzwords about Sweden. Uh, we say it's a really safe country. Uh, of course, we have crimes uh, like all other countries and cities. But as a student at the University of the West in Trollhättan, you should feel very safe. Uh, you can walk home from the pub in the evenings and uh, safely in the streets of Trollhättan. We're a modern country. And well organized, Aviat, aren't it's almost too organized sometimes when you're in a in a line or something and people look at yeah, you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It is it is very organized, you know. That's true. Yes. And we have great respect for civil freedom, equality, and diversity. Uh, everybody shall be treated as the person they are and the same, whoever you are, and that we are proud of. Everybody here, almost everybody speaks English, even the old lady on the bus speaks English. So international students feel very welcome and they can manage uh, their life without speaking Swedish. However, it's always good to learn the language if uh, you yes. would like to stay here. Aviet, have you learned Swedish? <laughs> you Being Swedish? honest, I'm no, I'm not really yeah. good in Swedish actually. But then you're the perfect example of that it's perfectly <laughs> well manageable to not be able to speak Swedish. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, in that way, I mean, um, 
I'm living in Sweden for seven years and still I'm not really good in Swedish. I mean, I will say my Swedish is almost zero, but still, I mean, I finished my studies and then, I mean, running my companies here for last five years and so on. So, and it was uh, absolutely okay. So as yeah. you said, yeah, I could be example. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even without learning Swedish, still you can survive in the country. Yes, definitely. Uh, we are a really innovative country with uh, many international business companies, and you will see a slide of that as well. Good public transportation system. However, in the winter time, train can be a bit, <laughs> a bit. <laughs> but still, it's good connected. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. And uh, you will see that soon, uh, especially to Gothenburg, which is the nearest big city from University Western yes. Holland. We have a really good uh, higher education system, uh, always uh, top ranked when uh, they measure higher education. Sweden is uh, quality education. Uh, it's a bit different, however, if you compare the Nordic countries' uh, educational systems uh, with the rest of the world. Uh, the whole Swedish society is really informal. You speak uh, by first name to everybody. Even uh, the professors, you can just say you to them or uh, by first name. It's also independence in the studies. Uh, we don't have lectures from morning to afternoon. Many courses, it's um, lectures maybe two or three times a week two, three hours per lecture. The rest of the time, it's a lot of group assignments, individual works, and these kind of things where students shall manage their own time. And the third uh, word, I would uh, say that um, you can uh, put on the uh, dedication is that we would like the students to have influence in everything, uh, in the lectures, in uh, everything they do. So these three words, informality, independence, and influence is really important and symbolic for the education here. It's different. It's hard in the beginning, but I've never heard of a student that complains about it. Uh, I don't know if you would like to say anything about that, David. You have experienced many students being in Sweden and studied and being good alumni now. Uh, are you getting what? Uh, about the educational way, about that we would like the students to manage their own time and have influence in things. Yeah, I mean, the fact is like even, uh, thanks, I mean, Thomas asking me this question. See, I, as I said, like I was a student here, so I finished my master's in entrepreneurship. So like while you will be a student here, you will have to expect like um, you will be starting uh, around 40 to 45 hours in a week. This is what you have to expect. So even like your university, the, either you do, I mean, assignment or the way group work, this or that, whatever it is, you have to study like around 40 hours per week. So it's like a here study is like a full time duties. Yeah. So then but at the same time, as a student, you will have an opportunity to hang out with your friends families and doing other things that is also okay because if you calculate the time in a week that is actually 168 hours in a week so if you think like okay 40 hours study still you have many hours left but the thing is as uh, thomas is discussing about of course we have to do the time management so even uh, Thomas, I would like to share with you so that like maybe students could be inspired. Um, even when uh, I was international students for my masters, I ran my company. Yeah. So though I didn't work for some other companies, but I ran my own company. So basically I had to work for my own companies, but still it was okay. So yeah, so, but the thing is you have to just uh, do a little bit time management, like how will you sort it out? But it is okay. Even all of the students here, they do lots of parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the good thing as well. And that is how life, uh, more, uh, working life is more and more as well, that you need to manage your own time. And yes. Be in charge of it. Yes, exactly. Good. Swedish Fika, another thing that is we are happy for here. We take every time at nine-ish in the morning, uh, all workplaces and students go and take a cup of coffee and uh, maybe a Swedish cinnamon bun, sit and yes. talk together and share things from social life, from studies, from working life. And that's a really good thing to informally get to know 
fellow students and so on. Just some examples of companies in Sweden and that is small startups in the beginning and now world famous companies, uh, Ikea, Scania, H&M, Volvo and so on. I will mention a bit more about Volvo soon. Trollhättan then and University West, the city where University West is named Trollhättan. You have this A with two dots over, it's A, so Trollhättan. As you can see, it's really beautiful. Uh, where the boat is there, it's in the middle of the city, the cha channel going from east to west of Sweden. We are here in southwest of Sweden. We are close to Sweden's second largest city, Gothenburg. And Gothenburg area region is the industrial hub of whole Sweden. And since we are close by, we are in that industrial hub. And that's important for us. And you will see it a bit later also, especially within our engineering programs is really reflected by that. Then we are close, kind of close to Gothenburg, Oslo and Stockholm, the capitals of Scandinavia. A little bit then of Trollhättan, as you saw, we are on the west coast of southern Sweden. Smaller city, 60,000 inhabitants, uh, but if you take train, 35 minutes, you will have big city life in Gothenburg. It's good that it's a smaller city, I would say, because then it will be more student friendly as well. And uh, you get to know students, uh, fellow students more. As you can see, all the pictures here, it's beautiful. And uh, all of them are connected to uh, to uh, the city center, 10 minutes away by bike to the waterfalls, for example. And no traffic jams and overcrowded streets. And we are also headquarters on some big and high tech industries. I will show you that as well. Uh, if they, there, you will see, we have these companies, for example, JKN Aerospace. It they manufacturing aeroplane parts and over 90% of the whole world's planes consist of parts from JKN. And they are a really important partner for us at University West, developing programs with them. We also developing programs with NEVS, a national uh, electric vehicle company, and Volvo. Volvo have their big main headquarters in Gothenburg. And as you saw, Gothenburg is close by. And we have some interesting programs connected to them, developing together with these companies. You will see that soon. University of West End, we are uh, founded in 1990. Small university, 625 employees and around 5,500 full-time students at campus. In total, we have 15,000 students, but we have many students that study courses and on distance so around 5500 at campus then 60 professors and we award phd as well but i will not talk so much about phd because phd in sweden uh, you apply for as a regular job and then you get a decent salary as well um, but we advertise this phd under open vacancies and that all swedish universities do this is something that is really important for us at the University of the West, work integrated learning. It's the profile of our university. Since uh, we started, cooperation and integration should be in focus. Everything we do is together with the surrounding society, companies, organizations, the city uh, of Trollhättan, uh, we do the things together. And we are also commissioned by the government to develop this. And we have it as a research field as well. Uh, we are small, as you saw, and Sweden as is an informal society. And when we're a small university, it will become even more informal. So you get to know almost all uh, students and especially you inter the international students get to know each other really well and have a good time here. We have an open door politics, which means that you can go into professors and the teachers whenever they 
not sit in meetings or have lectures, then you can go into them and have informal communication and talk to them by first name, as I said. The campus, we are a downtown campus in the middle of the city center. We are located a beautiful campus uh, developing fast and uh, we have done very nice things. So Avid, you need to come and visit soon again uh, because a lot of things have happened since last time, I think. Yeah, surely I will, I will. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's true, actually. Like, um, lots of things happened. And actually, like, um, even though I'm in Sweden, like, uh, due, due to pandemic issues, you know, last two years, basically, I didn't travel. <laughs> I mean, almost all of us, we didn't travel, you know, inside their countries even. I will do that, definitely. After wow. maybe, like, in January, February, I will do that. Yes, and then August, when all of the uh, attendants will be coming. Yeah. That, I think off. that will be the best time to come. I will yes. definitely do that in coming years. Nice. Surely. So we are downtown, close to Central Station, seven minutes to the station, and uh, connected to the rest of the world. We have a beautiful Innovatum campus, a production technology center where our engineering master programs are connected to. I will show a slide of that soon. A good service center and uh, that take care of all questions that you mu students might have. We have a beautiful state of the art library, well equipped uh, lecture and study rooms with the latest technology. And it's beautiful in the evenings and weekends when students sit there and have a Good time studying and having the Swedish Fika as well. This is the Production Technology Center. That is one of Sweden's newest and largest labs. Here we have the hardcore engineering, like welding, thermal spray, additive manufacturing, that is 3D printing, machining and robotics. And here it's the actual example of the work integrated learning. So you can see, for an example, ABB is mentioned on the robot. So ABB, for example, have their uh, research at this production technology center together with professors, PhD students, and our master students in engineering. So they will meet here and also having this FICA, Swedish FICA once again, in an informal way, students can get to know their future employee. And that is how you build a network and also educate yourself in the best of ways. This is some example of our companies that we are working tight together with. Uh, it's many companies, you know, some of them, uh, SKF and Saab, Nevs, I talked about them before. So many companies we are working together with. The programs we offer then, uh, we have two bachelor programs. I will not go through them so much. I will just mention the programs that we have and then we can talk more about it. Uh, if you have any questions and also Avijit will guide you further if you have questions uh, after this. We have a bachelor program in uh, politics and economics and then uh, one international mechanical engineering program with spring intake. Then the business school have three master programs, uh, three of them, no, not three, they have three one-year master programs, uh, one in finance, one in international business, and one in IT and management, and that will give you a master degree in one year. All our master programs will set the ground for you to do a PhD after it, even if it's a one-year program. We have three two-year programs at the business school, one work integrated political studies program, and then two broad masters that they are open for students with a bachelor degree in any field. So in sustainable development and one in digital leadership. So they are open for bachelor in any field. Engineering school offers these programs, uh, three, one and two year programs. And if it's a one or a two year program, a uh, diff big difference is that in the two-year program, you have an internship possibility. You can also, uh, you will also have a broader master thesis and some more courses. And you can always shift during first semester from one to two year or two to one year. And we have the programs in manufacturing engineering, robotics and automation, and AI and automation. Then we offer three two-year uh, these three programs, welding technology, 
And the one I talked about that is developed together with Volvo and NEVS, it's electromechanical vehicle engineering, open for mechanical engineers, and one in cyber security. Then we will launch one for electric engineers in spring now 2024, and one in operations and supply chain management. But they are not open now. All other master programs, they are open for admission now. And what we do in Sweden when we admit students, we look at the previous education. And for most of the master programs, the previous education needs to be in a specific field. Then we also look at English language. You will need to have IELTS. And for whole Sweden, it's IELTS 6.5 and no module below 5.5. Then you have exceptions of that as well, but that Avijit will guide you further with when you would like to apply. So we look at the previous education and the English language and also letter of motivation if you apply to our scholarship. And I will talk about that as well. All Swedish universities have a central admission system that is open now, close in, a, uh, in January 15. But for most of our programs, we will be open for late applications. But to be sure to have the chance to get the scholarship as well, apply in time. Always advise prospective students to apply in time. It's always good to do that. The fees that we have, the lower amount is for business programs, the higher amount for engineering programs. And it's kind of affordable fees from 10,000 up to 13,000 euro a year. We have an application fee of approximately 90 euro that students need to pay. And then we offer a 25% scholarship for master programs at campus. So you, if you apply to a master program in time, apply for the University of West scholarship. And there we have around 80 to 90 scholarship. And we, we look at GPA. And if you have a lower GPA, we look at the letter of motivation and so on. So that is why we would like to have the letter of motivation. Cost of living around 800 euro a month. Uh, you can always live more expensive of course and a bit uh, less expensive you can live if you cook together with other students and so on but around 800 euro and then i have this we give you health and accident insurance we pick you up at the airport on the central station on the arrival day supporting arranging accommodation if you apply for it in time and uh, we have both dorms and apartments your own apartments or shared uh, apartments and we give you a really good internet uh, introduction both online and at campus and then uh, one important thing is the student union in sweden play an important role both within studies where student union uh, helps us and uh, in all discussions in all management boards and program development and so on but especially outside studies they arrange pubs, they arrange uh, trips and many social activities. And that is a good thing. We also have a international student committee where international students especially get engaged and get to know each other in a really good way. We offer a Swedish course as well. Uh, so Avijit, you are as well welcome to take that if you like. Uh, so you're so welcome with that? Yeah, surely, surely, surely. <laughs> I should. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And then, of course, all other guidance, counseling, career counseling, and IT. Surely. Support. Residence permit. Uh, it's uh, You will need to have a letter of acceptance. You need to be admitted. Pay the first semester's tuition fee and then a bank statement in your own name with around eight thousand euro i think it is and all students can work while they study but as you heard when avi talked about the way of studies 
it is full-time studies. It definitely is. And during first semester, it is hard uh, to move to a new culture, a new way of studies, a new program, and a, a different way of studies as well. So it can be hard to find a job and have a job besides studies. So don't count on it. And then you have one year stay back option. So you, when you have graduated, you're allowed to stay one year to find a job in Sweden or in, uh, in uh, the rest of the EU, I would say. And uh, the programs, they give you a really good ground to have a really good job, I would say. So <clears throat> that was my presentation. And now the fun part of it, when we shall see if the audience have any questions and we guide them to sure. us. All right. So anyway, like a few of the questions they do have asked already a few of the things we discussed it as well so here one of the students is saying um hello can i apply university OS with foreign um moi means like medium of instruction certificate i mean and then i completed bachelor degree with csc 3.45 out of 4 from binary university malaysia okay what do you say about that uh, <clears throat> all right um i will say from my uh, of course even i need to do little bit of checking of his uh, academic documents and so on uh, so that i can give him a right answer but i mean based on my experiences uh roughly i can tell you uh, tell the students that it should be okay yeah it should be okay but on the screen you do have our contact details phone number and also our email address and so on. So please send us your academic yeah. documents. We uh, will check the documents and then we'll tell you 100% what will it be. But based on my uh, experiences, it should be OK. Yeah, that is good. That is good. But it's always yeah. good that they send to you, Aviat, because yeah. you have yeah, the exactly. perfect guidance. Yeah. So please send the documents and then we'll uh, guide you for that. That's good. And then uh, there is a question like, uh, is there any scholarships available and so on? So we yes. already discussed twenty-five percent scholarship. We can so to take twenty-five percent of the whole tuition fee. So as uh, Thomas said that, like, because uh, sometimes some of the students they are already like, okay. Um, I do not have really good CGPA, so I may not get the scholarship. It is not right all the time. Because as Thomas said that like they also look for the motivation later as well. So yeah. even like uh, we had a students last time who's uh, who got CGPA like a uh, 3.1 or 3.2. So it is not really good CGPA if we think of that way. But I mean, it's still uh, they managed to get the scholarship even from University West last year yeah, because yeah, yeah. they made really nice uh, motivation later because when university looks at your motivation later there so uh, there will be also chances to motivate university by writing a nice motivation letter yeah so if you can i mean make it then of course you'll have a good chance to get the scholarship so please and of course one more thing to uh, apply to a scholarship at uh, university West, you must have to give them number one priority yeah and two one or two is uh, important yes yeah. Yep. So it is like really important, like because uh, most of the cases, even most of the universities nowadays, actually they're putting them. You have to put them number one. Yes, and of so, course you should put University West as number one. Because, yeah. You know, so that is the important thing. No, see, yeah. it's a very good university, and it's still also there are many reasons. Of course, you said many things. Even as from a student's perspective, it's still the tuition fees wise, it is also good. Like uh, it is much cheaper than other universities comparatively yeah. in Sweden. So there are many reasons. Uh, it's located beside Gothenburg, basically. So even uh, in terms of like sometimes like I know like students, they like to students when they are coming from Asia, Africa, they like to live in largest city. So yeah. it's like a beside the Gothenburg. From Gothenburg is just I think thirty minutes away. Yeah, thirty-five so, minutes by train. Thirty-five so. minutes, so it's really yeah. good combination. So it's really, really good combination for the students and so on. So you can think about it. And then we have another questions here. What are the qualifications for one uh, to study in Sweden? 
Okay, so what are the qualifications for one to study in Sweden? Would you like to talk about it? Yeah, in uh, general, I, yes. I would say that uh, we look at uh, the uh, for the English uh, English test IELTS six point five, no uh, part on the five point five, and then we look at the academic. So for most of the master programs, you need to have a bachelor in in the field of the studies, and we look at that. And uh, so it's it's no entrance test or these things. So. We look at previous education and uh, the English. Exactly. So also he said, like, also, please, um, what are the courses or subject involved? I think we have already discussed about it, right? Yeah. yeah. And also look look at our uh, web page. Then you see yes. all the programs under the course. Exactly. And then also... And also, if you have time, even this video, um, this video will be saved in our, I mean... Um, YouTube and also Facebook pages. Also, you are most welcome to watch this video later on so that like you can also you watch from here as well. Like we already have talked about it. Yeah. So That's good number of programs we do have. But, but at the same time, if you are looking for any particular programs as we are on live right now, you can ask us about any particular programs, what you are looking for, then that will be easy for us to help you out because university might have many programs, but not the programs what you want or university might have the programs what you are looking for so then you don't need actually to know what all programs university have so please ask us like particularly what uh, what background uh, do you have and what are the things are you looking for then we can tell you particularly please exactly then uh, there is a say he's also asking uh, uh, can a foreigner be invited or study in your trainings or studies? Um, I didn't get the questions. Have you no. got the questions? But you uh, are always welcome to apply to a program. All yes. uh, Swedish and international uh, people uh, are welcome to apply. Study, yes, trainings, studies. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, everyone, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome to apply for the programs. And definitely, yeah. as we discussed it early, like there are some criteria, there are some entry requirements. At the same time, you have to look at the what's the entry requirement for that particular programs. And of course, if you don't know, we are here. So feel free to ask us as well. Then we'll help you. And then, uh, okay, he said... Um, we have another question here. Civil engineering project management subject available for master's program or not? Civil so I think, um, to, uh, Thomas, you can go for that. I mean, maybe yeah. we don't have any civil engineering. Am I right? No, but we, we, we are mostly like, focusing for mechanical. Yeah, but we will have this one in, uh, in supply chain uh, for fall 2024. And that is connected a, a lot to project management. Uh, open for all kind of engineers so that will uh, be a suitable program but that is open uh, august 24 next next year i mean uh, you mean like uh, that could be coming up for jan 2024 intake mm. august probably. 24 that will be but it will be a suitable program uh, for applicants interested in project management and these yes things. yes yes yeah so yeah so i mean if you don't apply by this time, I mean, as uh, Thomas said, so of course, maybe August 2024, you can apply over there. So by that time, if you are still not find anything, but maybe something you will find it with uh, University West for autumn 2024. <clears throat> and then we have a question here, like, uh, do you accept MOI? So see, let me, I mean, let me answer these questions. I mean, yeah. Thomas, um, yes. see, MOI is like a medium of instruction certificate. See, I mean, it will depend. I guess you are from Bangladesh, but also whatever, I'm not sure 100%, but whatever it is, it will depend if you have studied in Bangladesh. Usually, the answer is no. I mean, you cannot uh, just get the admission because you have studied in English. No. In that case, the particularly, you will be needed I'll 6.5, no band, less than 5.5 or even university accept PTE as well. But if you have studied in some, even though you are from Bangladesh, maybe you have studied some other countries for your bachelor and so on. In that case, it could be exempted. So better if you send us your academic documents and it costs nothing, just send us your documents 
we'll evaluate it and then we'll let you know whether it will be okay or not. I think it has, uh, I mean, I have uh, cleared your answer, I mean, questions. So also another question, MOI accept plus IELTS, okay? So I have already said that, I mean, if you are starting from Bangladesh, I mean, MOI will not be accepted. You must have to go for IELTS and or PT and so on. IELTS, PT or TOPEL and so on. But of course, if your degree is from outside of Bangladesh, maybe like it depends from the country to country from where you have done it. So in that case, just send us the documents, we'll check it and then we'll let you know. And on the other hand, of course, you will be needed it. <coughs> See, one thing, um, this is what I would like to tell all the students. I mean, English is the key for the higher education here. So when international students is going from one country to another country, it's always good if you are good in English. Because I was also international students once upon a time. To be honest, like if you are not good in English, then you cannot complete your studies. No, no, it will be totally <laughs> difficult. You will not be able to find an extra job. You will not be able to manage studies. You can, cannot apply for a job after studies and it will not be good. You can't do anything, basically. No, no. So even the uh, beginning of the session, even uh, Thomas asked me, like, hey, do I know Swedish and so on? But the answer was no. But how did I survive? And how I'm surviving? The fact is only English. See, Thomas, yeah. I mean, if I wouldn't know Swedish and even I wouldn't know English, then how would I communicate with you? And so on. You know what I mean? So the fact yeah. is, at least if you know English, you can survive. And you can finish your studies. Otherwise, actually, uh, I will say it will be very difficult. So, dear students, whoever you think like you'll go to any countries for your international studies without IELTS and so on, it, it will not be sustainable solution, being honest. Please sit for the IELTS, TOPEL or PT. There are many things nowadays. The main thing is that you must have to improve your English. Then it will be really good. What do you think about it, Thomas? Yeah, I totally agree. That is the thing. And then, uh, yeah, it is good. It is good to do that. Yes. Uh, so you, you can take it. Uh, Swedish language is mandatory for job sector in Sweden or not. I mean, you can take it. No, it's not mandatory, but it's always it's always good to learn a bit Swedish if you shall sit and talk to, uh, together in uh, uh, coffee breaks and so on. Uh, but it's it's not necessary, especially not in big companies or if you do your own startup. Uh, yes. So you will survive in Sweden without Swedish. However, I recommend <laughs> always to learn a bit. Of no, exactly. I totally agree with you. And But the thing is, you don't have to be scared for that. Oh, I don't know Swedish, then I cannot go to Sweden. It's not no. like that. No, don't no, be no. scared. See, no. the people, uh, the foreigner, whoever comes in Sweden first, of course, they wouldn't knew the local languages. So you come first, I mean, survive with your English, and then slowly you can learn Swedish. That is totally okay. So don't be afraid of applying like, okay, I don't know Swedish, then I cannot go to Sweden. We are not meaning that. I mean, of course, like a, if you live in a country, if you know a local language, it's always an extra point. It's always a good point. Though, I mean, yes. for me, like, of course, Still, I'm not good in Swedish, but I mean, if you know it, it's always a good. It's always good for you. But yeah. I mean, yeah. So don't be afraid of that. I agree. So that was the question so far. I mean, uh, maybe like a little bit, maybe we can just focus on like um, SI scholarships. Just in short, Thomas, if you would like to tell something about SI scholarships. Yeah, we have the yeah. our our university West scholarship that covers twenty five percent of the tuition fee uh, from the uh, beginning, and then during the rest of the studies, if you complete the studies, of course, and we take that off. Uh, it's a subsid uh, subsidized so. Uh, we take it off the invoice where you pay per first semester, then we grant the 25% there. We have maybe 80 to 90 scholarship and you would like, we need you to send in a letter of motivation. We look at the GPA and or the letter of motivation and also rank our program first or second. 
then it's a very good chance to have a have a to, uh, have it. Okay. Yes. And also, uh, SI scholarship, if you just... Uh, um, yeah, SI scholarship, uh, it's very few, help. it's many applicants to SI scholarships, and we usually get maybe five or six from Swedish Institute, but everything with SI scholarship is within, between this applicant and Swedish <laughs> Institute, and it's really yes. good scholarships that cover the whole fee, and you get some money as well for cost of living, but... It's between the it is very and... it is very competitive as well. Yes, it is very yes. competitive as well. Yes. So anyway, like uh, it's a good scholarships and so on. But it's still, if you are interested to talk about it, please let us know, and then we can help you for that yes. as well in future. Definitely. Just to let you know. <clears throat> so this this was the question so far, and uh, of course we had a really do, good discussions about lots of things. I think like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy definitely. About that. And uh, <clears throat> so we are uh, almost end of the session. I mean, um, Thomas, would you like yeah. to add anything extra more? I would like to say, but even <clears throat> if you don't know, they're starting my neighbors. Up. Even if you don't choose University West, or even if you don't choose Sweden, I'd say thank, take the opportunity and study abroad if you can, because you will meet friends for your life. You will have an extra dimension in your life as well. So. Please do so, and we can offer you good things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. So that's good. Uh, all right then. As a uh, um, that was the last question. All right then. So if there is no question, actually, we don't want to increase the I mean session for a long time. I think that's a good thing because this video will be recorded uh, with us uh, later on as well. So the interested students, you can are always welcome to watch these videos even later on. And then uh, later, if you have any questions on the screen, you do have our contact details. Please feel free to contact with us, and then definitely we'll assist you for that. Um, in this time, actually, I would like to say thank you to Thomas for giving us uh, time. I know you are very busy, but still you made the time before the, I mean, just a couple of days before of the Christmas time, uh, but still you made the time. So it's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Thomas, you are, uh, you are muted. You are muted. Uh, I, I know I, I had okay. uh, some issues there, but, okay, uh, right. but I wish all of you happy holidays <clears throat> and take time to relax and have a good start of 2023 when it comes. All right then. So um, thanks Thomas uh, for coming us here today and I wish you really have, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah, thank wish you, you all the bye best. Bye. Take bye care. Bye. Have a good day. Take bye care. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.